Step four, photo detection. In this step, we're going to describe the general formalism behind calculating the probabilities of detecting single photons and double photons. Double photons meaning that we have two detectors and both of them click. So, but before we do that, it's very important that we return to the quantization volume, which we introduced in this lesson. We have seen that in order to compute the fluctuations of the vacuum and in one, uh, one photon state, uh, we obtain the following expressions, that they are both proportional to the one photon amplitude squared. And inside the one photon amplitude hides the quantization volume V. These quantities, the fluctuations, are in principle measurable. We can uh, measure them in labs, getting um, concrete, concrete values. But on the other hand, this V seems to be arbitrary. So does it mean that we, we're going to measure something different just by considering different quantization volume? Or in other words, what is the correct quantization volume to consider in every physical scenario? This means that V cannot be an arbitrary value that we are free to choose randomly. It is connected to the physical scenario that we are considering. For example, if you have an electric field contained between two mirrors, in other words, you have an optical cavity, then the quantization volume is given by the volume of the cavity, which is just A times D, the separation between the two mirrors. But this sets up standing waves. So far, we have been talking about traveling waves. So what is the quantization volume for a traveling wave? Well, we go back to what we said about the wave packets of a single photon. The photon is ejected and it travels in a finite, um, finite length wave packet. And then it, it travels to the detector where we get a click or we don't get a click. To simplify this model a little bit, particularly we see that the amplitude of the field changes inside the wave packet. It rises and falls. We're going to consider a top hat model, meaning that we are going to assume that the wave packet is just given by a square wave of uh, height or width s, which is just given by our beam, and extent ctw, where c is the speed of light, and tw is the time duration of the wave packet. This seems like a not a very accurate model, particularly considering when we saw the uh, past oscillations inside the wave packet of a real realistic photon. But it turns out that in many scenarios, uh, many, uh, many scenarios, this model is actually quite accurate, given that we satisfy the following conditions. S, the width of our beam, has to be much larger than the wavelength of the radiation squared. And also, the duration of the wave packet must be much larger than the time period um, given by the frequency of our radiation. In many scenarios in quantum communications where we use a light of a photons of particular frequency uh, and width of a particular um, dimension, these two conditions are satisfied. And we will see how this approximation uh, simplifies a lot of the calculations that we're going to do in this and next lessons. So, now we're going to start with a semi-classical model for photo detection. We're going to consider our top hat model of a photon over here, and then we're going to have a detector of area ds located at position given by the vector r. And this is the description, the classical description of such a field, which we have seen many times before. The first term over here is referred to as the positive frequency term and denoted by E plus. This is a rather confusing notation, but it's standard. Particularly if you look at the term in the exponential corresponding to the frequency, we see that it's in fact negative. But I'm not going to change it, I'm going to follow the standard textbook notation. And this means that the other term, oscillating at plus i omega t, is known as the negative frequency term, denoted by E minus. Now, we ask the question, how do we compute the probability of a single detection event, meaning our 
detector detects a single photon. We denote this probability by dp, and is proportional to the uh, uh, rate of photo detection omega 1. This 1 signifies that we are looking for a single detection event, times the uh, um, area of the detector given by ds, times the time interval dt, which is our uh, time of integration. In other words, in this time our detector is switched on and ready to register um, a click. So all really that we want to compute is this photo detection rate of a single detection event given by omega 1 and is equal to s times the modulus squared of the positive frequency part of our electric field. And this s is known as sensitivity and we will give you an expression for that in the next couple of slides. Now, knowing how to compute omega, uh, W1, we can also compute a quantity known as W2, giving us the rate of double detection event. This means that if we have a scenario of two detectors, both ready to click, what's the probability that both of them click? Now, this is given by dp squared, and we are considering that one detector is at position r, and it clicks at time t, and while the other uh, detector is position r prime and clicks at uh, time t prime. So we're not necessarily co uh, considering uh, t equal to t prime, which we will do in the next lesson. And again, we are asking what is the probability of a double detection event, given that both detectors have uh, areas ds and ds prime, and in the time interval dt and dt prime. And this is given by the following uh, rate of photo detection, W2, where 2 signifies a double detection event. And it can be computed as follows. It's, it's just the product of the two W1s corresponding to the first detector and the second detector. And here we have sensitivity squared, simply because we are assuming that both detectors have equal sensitivity. Now, this is the semi-classical model. What's the quantum model for photo detection? How do we use what we have just said for classical electrodynamics and use it in a quantum description of the light? So the probability of a single detection event is given by the following expression, which is exactly the same thing that we wrote down on the previous couple of slides for semi-classical model. Does it mean that W1 is also the same? No. Now our fields are operators. And this is how you compute W1. Deriving this expression is a very lengthy process, therefore I just ask you to accept it, and we will get a lot of practice in calculating these rates W1 and W2 in future steps and lessons. So W1, the rate, photo detection rate for getting a single detection event, is given by S times the average of the following normally ordered operator. E minus the negative frequency of our electric field times E plus the positive frequency of our field. You can see that we can just write it in a more compact notation which will save us a lot of space as S times the norm of the vector of E plus acting on the state of our field at time t denoted by ket psi t. And for completeness I'm sure you have already guessed that the quantum forms, the quantum operators corresponding to the positive and negative parts of our electric field operator are given as follows. For the positive frequency part E plus, we've got I times the um, polarization vector times the one photon amplitude times the annihilation operator times this exponential E to the I k dot R. Important thing to keep in mind and remember is that E plus is written in terms of the annihilation operator and therefore E minus is written in terms of A dagger, the creation operator. So, what about the probability of a double detection event? Well, it's the following. Now, like in the semi-classical case, it's given by W2. How do we compute W2? It's by the following quite lengthy expression. The W2, the photo detection rate of a double detection event, is given as S squared times the average of e minus at r times e minus at r prime times e plus at r prime times e plus at r. 
the ordering of these operators is very important. We always have minus on the left, plus on the right. In other words, it's a normal ordering. We have A daggers on the left and A's on the right. And again, we will be writing it in terms of the norm of the vector. So we will only write S squared times E plus at R prime times E plus at R applied to our um, cat psi t, which is the state of our vector, uh, state of our field. So the punchline of this step is that the formulas seem complicated. But in the next step, we will apply them and you will see that the calculations are rather easy if you know how creation and annihilation operators act on number states. And also what's important is the ordering of the operators. Always have A daggers on the left and A's on the right. So after this uh, formal step, let's get some practice.